Welcome to the White Tail Legacy Podcast. All right, we're all set up here down this creek bottom. Being Buck's been in here a bunch of times, so good chance to see him. Not him. Meh. Smoked him. I think he just crashed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute money, dude. It's 76 degrees out. We just set up 80 yards from a buck and killed him at 18 yards. Here we are. We're set up on a scrape that's been absolute fire in the last eight days. We know a shooter went in here to bed this morning. Matt. I smoked his ass tonight. You get it? That was at eight, dude. That's at eight. Fucked out October 28th. Homies up for the rest of November. But absolute incredible season. Both kills on hanging hunts, right on the beds. Just making it, making it happen. All right, welcome to episode two of the Rutcation podcast series. Coming in your ear holes. Um, let's get into people make this possible. We're going to get into the show. This series is powered by Exodus Outdoor Gear. If you guys are in the market for a new arrow, the all-new Exodus MMT arrows, I've been shooting them all year. Um, this is a custom tailor-built arrow specifically designed for your bow, your poundage, your draw weight, um, the, the weight of head that you shoot. They're going to put that all in there and give you the absolute best shooting bow. I'm shooting a 300 spine with a 100 grain tip. Um, and I really, really like the fletchings that they put on there. High quality fletching, best shooting arrow that I've ever had. Um, shoot out of my bow, and that's the new Exodus MMT arrow. So if you guys are in the market for some new arrows, make sure and check those out. All right, let's get into what happened on day two. Welcome to the Whitetail Legacy Podcast, coming in your ear holes with episode two of the Rutcation series. Um, it is October 30th. I went out this morning, um, this afternoon. I had trunk or treat with the kids. How was the trunk or treat, Rainer? Was it good? Mm-hmm. Was it good? Yes. He says it was good. Had to step out of the woods to handle that business. But um, today I went back in on Boonertown, back in on Chips and Dip, hung back in on the Cedar Tree Edge. Um, was hoping with this east wind that we have and that anything that wanted a scent trek that whole entire property with the east, it could work that cedar tree edge, and there was a fresh scrape there that they had been working. Um, they've worked it in the past. Um, I got in real clean today. I was already set up, got in there probably 25 minutes before shooting light, um, set up, and probably sat there for 20 minutes, let it get good light, and then I rattled. And right, right when I rattled, a buck was there within 10 seconds. He must have been very close in that grass, and I couldn't see him. Um, but just a good uh, three-year-old deer. That's the cover art of the the podcast if you want to get a pick of him. Um, he's a 10-pointer with a base kicker, um, heavy beamed, but just a real good three-year-old looking deer. Um, he hung out there for a couple minutes, worked down, and then he actually J-hooked into a little bedding spot, um, watched him work upwind, make sure it was uh, safe, and then go back into that bedding. And then he never came out of that. So he was probably bedded by... 8 30 8 45 and never did come out of that bed um for tomorrow i did pack everything out like i said uh, this afternoon i had uh trunk or treat um so we went to four trunk or treats got a bunch of candy i'll be eating candy out in the the woods for sure um but uh to go back to what i plan on doing tomorrow trailer park my urban deer he showed up this afternoon coming out of the doe bedding area um right after dark and then, um, right, or no, he was daylight this morning. He was daylight this morning coming out of the bedding area at 930. And then, um, I didn't get any pictures of him on the food plot, but it's real close. And then tonight he was right after dark. He was about an hour after dark. He was going back into that bedding area. Um, there's five does that are holed up in there. They're on the mobile cam every day on the food plot. So hoping that I'm going to slip in there tomorrow morning and hunt the food plot. This will be the first time I hunt this little eighth acre wood hidden, you know, kind of circle food plot there. And uh, plan on going in there, rattling, um, and see if I can pull him out. He's an aggressive deer. 
So I'll see if I could pull them out, and uh, if not, maybe get them to come up in there and work some scrapes or show some dominance at least. I'm kind of going to let the day kind of the morning kind of go on maybe 30 35 40 minutes let that those does get through there there at first light see if they pull him through um if he's not with them like i said then i'll rattle and hopefully i can pull him up out of his bedding area i know where he's bedded um he came he went into the bedding area this morning about 9 30 then came back out an hour after and uh, i just can't hunt it with the wind that we have tomorrow and get in there clean so i'll be I need a western wind, and it's north northeast. So, switching to northwest, so that may be something that I can pull out of the hat after tomorrow. But tomorrow, I'm going to hunt the morning until about ten, and then my kid has his school walk um, for his uh, his costume walk with his class, and that's something that I've never been able to go to because most of the time I'm working. So I'm going to go to that, Bladen's, um, and then I'm going to go to my oldest kid, Rainer's walk. It's at like 2.30, I think. Right, Rainer? You don't know? You're supposed to know this stuff. Um, but yeah, I'm going to go to that. And so tomorrow evening, I more than likely won't be hunting. I'm going to spend one more night with them because I'm going to go trick-or-treating um, again. Um, and then after that, I will be in the woods banging away there morning and evening all day sets. Like I said, we do have some hot temps coming might play that by ear, watch the cams, make a plan. But then it looks like the 5th through the 12th um, is really good weather. You know, 50s and low 30s, high 40s. Um, so I'm going to be doing all-day sits during that time and trying to, you know, hunt the pinch points, um, go after the, the bent G2 buck and, uh, and the 11-pointer over there and see if I can make something happen. But... That's the plan for tomorrow. Go in and try to hunt uh, the trailer park urban buck. I know you guys will be listening to this in the morning, first thing. So hopefully I'll be able to come back on here tomorrow afternoon and tell you that I got him down. But that's the plan for tomorrow. Um, hope you guys are enjoying the series. Hopefully you guys are out there getting some hunts in. I won't be calling anybody tonight. It's pretty – well, I might get someone on. Let's see what I – all right, I got an absolute big buck killer on the line, Matt Bartlett, man. How's it going tonight? Oh, it's going good. Just kicking it in the chair. We took tonight off to get a few things done around the house. I did the same. We did trunk or treating pretty hardcore um, tonight. Oh, yeah. So cams are pretty dead during daylight. I did have a shooter coming back in, sneaking back into bed a little late this morning on cam. But uh, what are you seeing for the bucks out there? What, what do you what do you got What do you got them doing? Dude, ours are pretty much non-existent maybe once a week twice a week kind of popping in and out um the main reason i think we got a lot of that going on is there's still a lot of corn still a lot of corn in and and what, what the corn is that is out you know it's still stock field fresh cut corn and that, that's where them deer are at that's where they spend most of their time you know those the bucks that we've got you know they're coming in our farm we've got several does living in they're coming in there about once every four or five days or so just do a little loop, scent check, see how close those does are to coming in, and then they they stay out for a few days. And you know that, that's typically what we've been seeing so far this month is really little activity, honestly. And the, the you know the two and three year old bucks are doing their thing. They're hitting scrapes. They're kind of making pretty regular loops through the farm every couple of days. But the older bucks, they're they're not. They know it's not time yet, so they're just hanging out until it's time to go. Yeah, that's what I'm seeing, too. I'm seeing I had a nice three-year-old. I rattled in a nice three-year-old today, um, a 10-pointer with a kicker off the base. And um, at first, he kind of surprised me, you know, coming through the grass. I thought he was a little bigger, but that's what I'm seeing, those three-year-olds. They're, they're there. I have been noticing that my mature bucks are getting closer to daylight in the morning and the evening on cam. Um you know, they were that 3 a.m., you know, 2 a.m. Now they're like right. 5, yeah. 9 at night instead of midnight. You know, they're getting closer hitting those scrapes, um, but mm -hmm. they're in that security cover still. They're not wanting to come out on the edge until, you know, it's right. uh, yep. good good and dark. But um, that's exactly what I'm seeing, too. So I know a lot of other people are seeing um, some mature deer but moving, but no one I really know has killed anything the last few days. No, we did see a six-year-old this morning, and Jesse passed him. The buck we call Pawpaw, he's about 90 inches on a good day. <laughs> and, 
he he broke off half his rack. We weren't going to shoot him anyway, but he broke off half his racks about a month ago or so. But half well, it was about halfway through the month, I guess he broke off half his rack, and you know he really kind of checked himself even further down our our list there as far as things we want to mess with. But other than that, it's been it's been really scarce. You know, we're like I said, we're still not getting even regular buck activity on our cams right now. It's you know, once yeah, or it's kind maybe of an once off year for week, sure. It's real slow, real real slow, un- uncharacteristically slow. But hopefully this week with the warmer temps coming, these farmers will get in their fields, get all their corn out, and the guys that do like to get their stuff plowed, hopefully they're going to be getting finished up, and all the neighboring properties aside from ours will hopefully get plowed under and. That'll kind of push those deer. Yeah, push them in there for the sure. A little bit, get in there because hope I I don't foresee our corn, our seventy acres of corn getting picked for probably another two weeks tops, maybe three. So we'll be doing all right once those deer kind of are forced to come in there. I guess you know we're going to know a lot more here in the next five to seven days. I think you know obviously the rut kicking off here pretty quick, like but. I think after this little warm spell we're going to have this week, it'll turn on after it cools off next weekend. Yeah, I think so too. Just this, uh, that's what I was saying before this, you know, they got this heat coming. I'm going to play it by ear, whether I really, you know, hunt all day or hunt evenings, the mornings are going to be where it's at. But then it looks like the fifth through the 12th, 13th, 14th, they're going to have some, you know, highs in the fifties, lows in the thirties. There's, that's going to be some peak, you know, some really good times to be out there. These bucks would be cruising good. So, I'm kind of doing the same oh, thing, monitoring definitely. cams, taking her easy, and preparing for the the big whammy coming where I'm going to spend all day out there. But yeah. uh, these 70 degree temps, it's hard to it's hard to be out there. I tried it a couple years ago, and it's it's rough. And I was telling Jesse and Grant earlier today, you know, I don't want to burn myself out too early. I'm off for three weeks. You know, it's no sense in you know going full steam ahead when i got 70 degree temperatures for another yeah. four or five days yep you would you you feel like you're kind of like man i want to be out there but it's better to knock some stuff out so when you need to be out there you're not sitting there like oh, man yeah. i need to get this done or i should have done that and then you got that done you're like okay i'm good for this whole entire week i could rip because i plan on that like i said that fifth through the 12th there i'm going to be hot and heavy out there all day trying to make it happen but oh yeah absolutely all right, man. Well, I appreciate you coming on and uh, letting uh, letting the people know what you're seeing out there. I'm sure uh, people are probably seeing the same things, but it's nice to hear a couple other guys that are kind of struggling as yeah. well. <laughs> Not much of anything currently, but I expect that to change in about four or five days. All right, man. Have a good night. You too, buddy. All right. Later. All right. Well, there you have it. Uh, not much out of me. Like I said, seeing a three-year-old. Um, a couple of does there um, this morning, and he went. He's been going out, been seeing some two and three year olds, few does, but the big bucks are uh, just aren't. They're not on the does, not yet, and they're they're not really really pushing it. Um, like I said, when if we had some cold weather, it'd be different, but um, definitely go hunting if you can. You can still kill, but uh, if you need to get some stuff done and you'd rather take that time in a few more days when it cools off and you get further into November, um, I think that's a pretty pretty good idea to do um i took these two weeks of vacation um all at once so i'm going to try to capitalize it as much as i can and uh definitely that next week going to be hitting her hard but appreciate you guys tuning in all the way to the end like i said i'm going to keep trying to bring on someone a buddy of mine someone in the industry um that is out there hunting and see what they're seeing too because it's crazy one guy can have a really bad day and another guy could have an incredible day um so but i'm going to go in there after trailer park tomorrow when you guys are listening to this, I'll be in the stand, and hopefully I can put them down. Always try to do the right thing. Try to leave a legacy. You got anything to say, Rainer? Huh? No. No? He's feeding the fish behind me. <laughs> All right. We love you guys. Appreciate you tuning in. Uh, we out.